Welcome to Revlog, where this week we are Advent 3, mm-hmm. we are approaching Christmas, and, and Jesus is speaking to us very directly. Indeed. Um, from the text From the today. cradle. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's not true. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't expecting that. Well, well, well played there, Brian. <laughs> if anyone could speak from the cradle, it, it would have been be, Jesus yes, Christ. Our Lord. Yes. Right? <laughs> I, don't know, I, I feel like in the, in the story, it's the heavens that speak for him. Right? The, Indeed. The, yes. Uh, there. Uh, so, so this week, we come to a lengthier section of text. Yep. It's, you know, Jesus in his sermon, he, he moves into the... Uh, you have heard this, but but I say this, mm-hmm. and he gives us some uh, different interpretation than what what they've heard before. So, Brian, help us just jump in here. So, in this text, what, what stuck out to you? Where was the Lord leading you in this text? Further up and further in, you uh, know, as C.S. Lewis, sorry, there you go, uh, says, and he, he's he is not, you know, Jesus is not some <clears throat> iconoclast that is going to say, you know, out with the old, you know, in with the new. He is, he loves the law. Mm-hmm. I love your law. He, he would be right there with Psalm 119, you know, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and then he says, okay, you know, the law, all right, but let's see how far this really goes yeah. into the yeah. human spirit. And this is not a, an exercise in <clears throat> looking good. And it's an exercise in righteousness. Yeah. And so he takes it much deeper in and further in than anybody yeah. had heretofore done yeah. so. Uh, yeah, and, and I picture there's a couple of places in Scripture where Jesus is teaching, and the people are dumbfounded. They said, mm-hmm. we've not heard teaching like this before. That's right. right. He, that's right. And that was a sometimes, common Sometimes they, they use the word, response. he's teaching with authority, mm-hmm. or with authority that we have not seen or heard and I think that's part of what you see here. There's something. There's right. a, there's a depth that Pharisees couldn't. Yes. Garner. I mean, it, they they had gotten really um, lazy, you know, yeah. really, uh, and and the the shortest path to you know fulfilling the law, and it and it was it was shocking to people, and so shocking that sometimes they would find ways to close off to that by saying, wait, wait, this is a, this is a carpenter's son, you know, what, what is he? And so, uh, there was that kind of response, but, uh, Jesus, uh, says, let's, let's talk about that. And then he takes, uh, instances of the law, you know, and, and like, uh, capricious, uh, a capricious attitude towards marriage, Mm -hmm. you know, and if, if, you know, as long as you, uh, cross the T's and dot the I's, you know, we're not go- going to look, you know, take a second look at that. And he, he said, if you even play into that system of this capricious attitude toward marriage, you have just dynamited the the law, you know, and, and just made it to be nothing at all. And so um, it's that uh, step-by-step um, remaking and rebuilding of the human spirit that G- Jesus takes us on a tour, you know, yeah. through through the human spirit there, and and begins his process of renewal. I think mm, that's good. It's great. Brian is so wise. Yes, so wise. Are we practicing encouragement today? Yes, absolutely. Oh, no, good. It's, yeah, my, it's, it's my spirit. It's the Christmas it's kind of, season. Uh, Post Christmas you know, at first, and I'm yeah. just so it's kind of incongruent with uh, <laughs> you know how things normally go. But whatever. Well, okay. So truth be told, um, uh, you know we're still in the middle of Galatians, right? And, yeah, and right. As, as we're filming this and 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 reading Paul and reading reading the words of Jesus here, if you read that first sentence from this this passage, yeah. you'd be like, uh, you know, Paul stands in opposition to Jesus, and uh, and it's if if you just stop there, but you know obviously you can't stop there. Um, and the other thing I want to point out is what follows here is Jesus kind of unpacking all of these moral laws, the the laws, the the, the ten commandments, the mm-hmm. ones that that Moses gives, and that's and some of the the ones that um, Paul is, is specifically t- um, unpacking are some of the ceremonial laws and some of the some of the other <clears> ones. <throat> that doesn't it, it doesn't change the fact that. Um, Jesus makes this bold statement that, you know, I love the law, not a, not a pen stroke is going to pass away. 
but let's look at these for a minute. Let's mm-hmm. let's talk about what what these really mean, and then and then tell me how you're doing. Uh, <laughs> you, you almost you almost feel like you know it. It says here that you know you shouldn't do this, but let's. Like, what does that really mean? Yeah. And then you, I can just That's, feel this, the yeah, blood right. rushing up and just how uncomfortable that feels. You know, you're talking about lust or talking about just your eye wandering, talking about you, some mm-hmm. of these things like, what do you, what do you mean? What, what, <laughs> that, that, and how uncomfortable that, because, because it's talking about righteous living. Like you uh-huh. said, it's yeah. not talking about, and, and this is exactly what Paul would, would go on right, to say. Exactly, it has yeah. nothing to do with you going, boom, did it. Yeah. And didn't murder anybody today. <laughs> You're like, yeah, but but did you call somebody a fool? Yeah. Did you did you think poorly about someone? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then you just assassinated their character in your heart and you might as well have murdered them. Yeah. And I mean, you know, that's uncomfortable. I'm uncomfortable sitting here talking about it. And and yeah. you know, you can that I the squirming that had to be happening, and I'm and Jesus is I you know, his character is not one that that he's trying to make people, you know, just yeah, and, and I think, I mean, to your, your point, it, on the surface, it sounds like it, Jesus and Paul talk about two different things, but it, you're right. As we dig deeper, one of the things they, they both talk about here is, is how the, the law is how God has revealed our unrighteousness. Yeah, that's right. And, and, he, and it, he, it doesn't make us righteous. It shows how faulty we are. And you know, he goes on to say, as Paul, yeah. as Paul would later say, you know, that none of us can fulfill this. No. Except, <laughs> and and yeah. and, I, and I just it it just it should make us uncomfortable when we really mm-hmm. look at the law and what what is what is expected of us or what what if, if you know if you put those two together it's like I am unworthy yeah. and that's a place that's where we start to yeah. recognize exactly I cannot yeah. do this yeah and that's where we meet him yeah yeah I think that's right if if like the Pharisees and around Jesus or the or the the false teachers in Jesus say if if you're using the law to say I'm a pretty good person. You've, you've completely missed the boat. That's right. right? And that, that's what Jesus is saying here too. The law doesn't, um, isn't a way to, to your point, to, to make a, a check mark and feel good about yourself. It, sh- it really should be the opposite. Yeah, but it's not proving my righteousness. It's proving my unrighteousness. unrighteousness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Brian, as, as you, you read this, what, what question came to mind? As, as I prepare to give the question, I, oh, yeah. I do want to say that, uh, Aaron, that's hilarious about the, you know, making people squirm, you know, mm-hmm. and so forth. And I, I, it's almost like the old 70s, okay, uh, 70s TV 18. series. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Peter Falk mm. as Columbo. You know, he yeah. was always, he was always like, uh, what, just one, one more, more thing. One more thing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was just, he would lower the moon, yeah. you know. Yeah. I wasn't amazing. expecting Columbo today. That's, yeah, I know, that's a great, I know. Uh, love, love a good love Columbo. Love a good Columbo reference. Yeah. But, but, forgive me. I, I just, I just. It's probably me, but one more thing. Uh, but uh, you're way too put together to do it. <laughs> let's, let's be fair here. The rumpled Columbo. Uh, but anyway, um, the the when Jesus talks here, you know he, as as Aaron said, you know it's not you know one and done, and that means that the human person is really a, a greater wonder than just surface activity mm-hmm. would indicate. And so um, what Jesus helps us see here is that the law, which is the word of God, you know, the law was spoken by God. Um, and how does the word of God function? It, it, it comes to us and it says, uh, it says you are more than um, your body, you know, you're more than uh, what you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, you are, you're very, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. And so when I am thinking about myself, uh, what am I looking at when I look at myself? I'm looking at not just my surroundings or my station in life, but I'm looking at my spirit and my my body and all of that together. So also when I look at, at you or anyone, what am I what am I looking at? And and so this is a the the question that I have is just that. The the law um 
calls into question what we're really, what are, what am I really doing in the presence yeah. of another person? What am I doing mm-hmm. to myself? You know, and all of that in the presence of God. What am I doing? Yeah. And if I don't call that into question, then I will never examine myself before God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all of the things he, he mentions here are all relational. Absolutely. Right? The, the That's exactly people, right. That's exactly and, right. And the violation of the second greatest commandment. And it is the, the whole one of the holiest places to stand is in the presence of another person. Yeah. yeah. You know? It's good. Yeah. Aaron, what question do you have at the text? I think we can accept as a truism that that scripture brings comfort. Mm-hmm. That that we, you know, go to scripture for comfort. But I would say Knowing that and accepting that, do I sometimes run to scripture to justify an action or a feeling or a sure. a sin? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, just to to find a way to make myself feel good about mm. what I've done or left undone. Um, much much like yeah. the the right. Pharisees would use the law to say, "Look at what I did." Um, can I do I run to it to to find to justify my actions rather mm-hmm. than to confront my sin? Yeah. Yeah, we can we can all revert to some kind of Phariseeism. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, we can. Yeah, well, we would love to hear your thoughts uh, on these verses as well. If you'd comment below.